Welcome once again to 2730 years and counting. Uh, this is the podcast that I that I manage and it has become an obsession with me because it's about the thing which is the biggest obsession for me which is the two houses of Israel and the fact that they've been separated for nearly 3000 years and that they're because of prophecy saying so they're, they will be coming back together soon, but not before certain things happen in, in the historical context. And uh, today, we're going to spend our time with Alexander Vegich. You remember him. He's been with us several times. And he's going to be telling us today about the European uh, Empire, the European Union, what it's going to become uh, because of the fact that it has to become that in order for Yehovah to take it down once and for all. And um, he's going to be doing, giving us all of the scriptural context and and everything else, Father. Every, every, he he knows he knows more than anybody I know about how to lay this stuff down. And I think that uh, once you've listened to it, you'll notice that there's all sorts of stuff in scripture that backs him up. So with that being said, I will let it go. And Alexander, anytime you're ready to go, go right in. Well, greetings, friends. Nice to see you all. Hopefully, you're keeping warm and safe. I'm saying that because last night was the first snow that fell in my country. <laughs> and, of course, the along with that, the temperature has, has dropped. And now, for the rest of December, which, of course, uh, all of you, many of you, the whole world is now chained with this festive season, you know, December, because Christmas is coming up. Oh, can you believe that? One of the worst yes. pagan... One of the worst pagan practices that God condemns in, the, in his word is coming up and people are just going berserk. Anyway, the rest of December, as far as we see here in the weather forecast, will be kind of uh, icy and very cold. So I hope you'll keep warm and hopefully you'll keep safe. I hope you'll keep safe from all the uh, festive paganism that has been <laughs> engulfing this world and it's always starts in December well even more in your countries your Christmas carols began even in October well I have to say East Europe is catching up with the rest of the world because uh, now it's all starting all of this uh, uh, festive craziness starts in November so sooner or later yeah. we'll catch up to October anyhow well I've been mm. watching these trends in the world because I'm amazed how uh, year in and year out people have been falling into this madness, uh, festive madness in the winter, as if uh, as if there is no tomorrow, and right. uh, as people just completely forget the word of God and what the word of God says. And this is particularly for the uh, this forg uh, forgetfulness is particularly worrying when it comes to Northwest Europe, British Isles. United States, North America, of course, and the ends of the earth, as the Bible calls Australia and New Zealand, because these areas are all populated by the descendants of the so-called lost tribes of Israel. And uh, it's so right. worrisome to see how year in and year out all of this madness when the winter comes uh, is on increase, increasing level, which is terrible, which is terrible yeah. to see because... Uh, because it's all, all of these festivities are basically centered around the sun god and all of this nominal Christianity that those nations pride, take pride in, are basically uh, uh, sun worshipping, sun worshipping customs and sun worshipping legacy that remain from yeah. the previous centuries. And yet people have no idea about it because people don't care, you know, right. people don't care and uh, but the fact that you don't care, my dear friends, doesn't mean that uh, that God doesn't care. <laughs> thankfully. That's right. Exactly. That, I was exactly. exactly thinking those words. Right. So That's thankfully exactly. yep. for all of us, for all of you and the rest of humanity, God does care. And because God does care, he's going to bring the end to all of that madness anyway. And he's going in the process of bringing the end of that madness. He's going to also punish the modern, the, 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 the modern day house of Israel for all of its terrible sins and paganism through which they irritate and, and provoke God to anger, you know. In the Old yeah. Testament, we read in the prophets how the Old Testament house of Israel, as well as the Old Testament house of Judah, 
uh, where the the two houses of of Israel right now there's still two houses because they're still separated we're not still united sadly but one of these days is going to happen thankfully so the end of this madness will be the reunification of the house of Israel and the house of Judah reunification yeah. of the ten tribes of Israel that have been scattered all, all over the place and the house of Judah of course which re retained its uh, identity and we today we know them as the Jews and we know that they have their Jewish state the state of Israel but that's not all of Israel anyway in any case one of these days the end of this madness will be reunification of the two houses and the end of this madness will be the finally uh, to see all humanity released from all of these all of these terrible customs that are just related to sacrificing children and uh, and 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 honoring sun god by all kinds of lewdness and 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 uh, loose loose morality and so on and so forth. The Bible is repleted with that. I mean, if you read the Old Testament, we have the book of Ezekiel that was basically the uh, uh, message to the lost ten tribes, and then we have the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was there just before the Babylonian captivity, which lasted for seventy years, and he kept warning both the king and the people and the false prophets that uh, you know uh, the, the, their kingdom was just about to fall and be taken into captivity why because of total disobedience to god and because they were constantly provoking god to anger just like the israelites did before them yes and in fact even the bible says that uh, the house of judah did even worse it says than the house of israel incredible didn't learn its lesson at all and today we have both houses basically going their own way and not learning any lessons from it. And the house of Judah is not any exception. Uh, if almost, you, almost as if they're they're competing with each other. To, yes. To, to see who can be the most evil. Who can be the most evil <laughs> and who can provoke God even more to anger, you know, and who can be That's the right. champion, well, not like this World Cup champion, but like the champion of, of evilness, even though speaking of the World Cup, I have to mention <laughs> to you, <it's>, uh, <laughs> yes. I have to mention mm -hmm. to you and to the listeners that years years ago from one of my good friends I remember and we uh, this past Sabbath my friends and I here in Serbia those of us who read the Bible and those of us who believe that we belong to the lost house of Israel indeed and we below that we, we, we believe that we have been uh, certainly called to be aware of our identity and turn to Yehovah or turn to God of Israel, to God of Israel. Anyway, we found out this. There is this in strong. There is this um, term Gilulim, Gilul, Gilulim, and it's referring to actually a, a, a rounded, rounded God, flying rounded God. You know, <laughs> interesting enough. Mm. Uh, I'm just uh, uh, the other day. So after the Sabbath finished, we found that. Uh, Gilul, Gilulim. I, I remember that it was in. I remember it was in the Bible somewhere, and somebody indeed found it for us. So mm -hmm. um, uh, let me see. Let me see if I could find it now here quickly. If not, I'll just mention it's a rounded, flying, flying idol. What does that remind us of? You know, rounded, rounded football. You know, the name of the game, football. You know, and all of these fans and all of this worship of the ball and worship of all of these of all of those. Things and you know, uh, rounded, you know, rounded, flying, flying, flying yes. uh, idol. You know, there we uh, go. This madness. I mean, this madness yeah. was incredible in the last I don't know how many weeks. We've been all engulfed with that madness, and yeah. uh, uh, the worst madness here in Serbia was when Serbia and Brazil were to kind of you know have a match. And of course, Brazilians beat us. Uh, it was so funny to see. It was so funny to see the pride of a nation. You know, we we thought here in this country that we could be a huge football, a football superpower like Brazil. It didn't happen, of course. And as you should see later, uh, before, as it says in, in Proverbs, uh, pride comes before before disaster. Uh, just like we see the pride in the house of in the house of Judah and the house of Israel, you know. In any case, right. they take pride in there. They take pride in their one those ten tribes in their Christianity, which is nothing nothing more but a falsified version of Christianity that was imposed on the whole world in the fourth century by Emperor Constantine, the supposed first Roman emperor who was a Christian. Yeah, he was just a pagan, pagan to the court to the very end. Anyway. And uh, we see the House of Judah also taking some pride as well. Uh, part of that pride is that they've been they've been kind of uh, 
bombing the uh, pre pre preemptively bombing some of the targets in Syria. Uh, they've been upgrading their, their their military facilities because they're, as I keep reading in Jerusalem Post all the time, for they're getting ready for a future war with Iran. I yeah. mean, this I've been reading this a future war, a future war with Iran, a future or preparation for a future. War. I've been reading this for months in Jerusalem Post. You know, the most yeah. outstanding, of course, and the most the most known, the most widely famous. Uh, uh, what shall we say, voice of the Jewish people. Uh, the other day I read, I read again in Jerusalem Post, how uh, Iran happened to be able to scan some potential military targets in Israel. Uh, I don't know how did they manage to do it, but, you know, the, the, the article would always explain. And then it says, um, again, for a future war. I'm like, wait a second, what in the world is going on? I mean, we've been having these preparations for a future war, in the Middle East. Now that's very important because the Middle East, at least in the last century, was considered by the world as a pow powder keg. And right. there was always this constant fear in the last century, and I'm not sure that in this century, you know, people keep kind of uh, <laughs> dulling and dumbing their, 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 their awareness and their senses of not only who they are, but what might happen. And in the last century, there was a fear that, you know, any, any potential conflict in the Middle East would just drag the whole world into and create a world war, another world war, which is exactly right. what is going to happen. Because I keep mm -hmm. telling people, you know, God's eyes are upon his land. And his right. land is not Ukraine, and his land is not Russia, and his land is not the Balkans, and his land is not African country or Congo or Rwanda or whatever. His land right. is right there in the Middle East. You know, and when we read the uh, the end of the book of Ezekiel, exactly, we read about the future temple. We read about uh, once again all the all the tribes being back into their land, being reunified, and they'll also cast lot for each one for the, each land. Anyway, the first land, <laughs> interesting enough, will will be cast for Dan, the tribe of Dan. Well, why is it there? Because in Genesis 49 it says Dan is going to wait for his salvation. You know, because the tribe of Dan was the most idolatrous. And the most uh, uh, the most rebellious, after all, against God of Israel. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we had this. Remember the uh, the first Israelitish king, Jeroboam, created those uh, calves in uh, in right. Dan and 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 Bashan. No wonder. So in any case, we read then that uh, the land that will be the land that God promised to Abraham, then to Isaac, then to Jacob, who is the father of the twelve tribes. You see. And it's true that that land is indeed promised to those to those people who will come back to mm -hmm. their land after being punished for their sins. And, yes. uh, you know, the eyes of God are, are, are still are still upon upon that land. And that land yeah. really can be potentially dangerous because now the three the world knew it in the last century. The three main world religions are all interested in that land, particularly in Jerusalem, you know. Because the Jewish, the Jews will say it's their eternal capital. Yes, of course. I would add to that it's the future eternal capital of all of Israel. Anyway, uh, the, uh, the 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 Islamists, the the Muslims, uh, consider Jerusalem to be one of their three holy sites. You know, they've got Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. Supposedly, I think was it that from Jerusalem, uh, their their prophet Muhammad, uh, Muhammad just uh, ascended to heaven or something like that. Right. Uh, and then there is the third religion, the third main factor there is uh, perhaps nobody thinks about it but it's this nominal christianity and right. um, dear friends let me remind you that uh, all popes including the current one uh, all the popes dreamed of having their headquarters in all oh, surprise surprise jerusalem of course so the christians the nominal christians are very much interested in jerusalem and uh, from all of the european uh, european nations there is one that is outstandingly interested in becoming a peacekeeping force in the world because of its infamous past. It's the German nation, of course. And the Germans have always considered themselves to be the uh, the master race and also defenders of Christendom from all of these barbarians, you know. Of course, among the barbarians, they they, they count the Slavic people, the East Slavic people, Russians, Ukrainians, uh, South Slavic, you know, the, 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 the Balkan people, they consider them to be barbarians. And they themselves, you know, they are the defenders of the Christian race, which means that that's why we had the anti-Semitism 
in the in the last century and the terrible Holocaust which happened to the Jewish people, which means that the eyes of the German people are also, of course also on Jerusalem. <laughs> so while the eyes exactly. of all of these various religions are on Jerusalem, the eyes of God, the eyes of the eternal are on the land itself. And that land really, whatever might happen in that land could really create the, the, the shock waves all around the world. And this is my friends, you, you may wonder, is there anything that the Holy Scriptures will tell us that something like that, that, the scenario like that will happen? Oh yes, indeed there is something in the Scriptures which we perhaps may not have understood in the past or perhaps we did not even pay attention in the past. But uh, because over the time we just keep forgetting things, you know, over the time people forget uh, forget about the Roman Catholic Church and Vatican, you know, now we live in this beautiful ecumenical age when all the Protestants and Catholics, uh, you know, keep their holy Christmas very soon. Oh, really? Oh, well, go ahead. And you'll be very surprised. I was uh, very often, I would tune into, uh, well, at, in the past Vatican radio when I didn't have, but now with this internet technology, I tune into Vatican TV and just to watch the, you know, watch what the, these abominations going on in that place, because uh, it's very interesting. And I would just encourage all of you Protestants to do the same this 24th and, you know, follow the, the, the Mass in Vatican, in which to your surprise, surprise, you'll hear, uh, uh, you'll hear a tune that all of you sing, the tune, I don't know who, who, who borrowed that tune from whom, whether Catholics from Protestants or Protestants from Catholics. Uh, you know, you know, in Serbian it's translated uh, a quiet night. I don't know how it's how how it is titled in English, but in any case, silent, silent night, silent night. Silent there night, we go. Yeah. All right, silent night. There we go. <clears throat> and I was the first time that I I I I, I uh, uh, spied on Vatican, as I always say in in, in, in jest. <laughs> I always tell my friends, I said, I'm going to spy now on Vatican, you know, tonight is the mass. Right. I just wonder how abominable it really is, because God describes it in his word as an abomination. So I was like, oh, let's see what an abomination looks like, really, because I'm not a Catholic, so it didn't really. And then the first time I tuned in, I was, I was just shocked when I heard that silent night. Them singing it in Latin, of course, singing right there in Vatican in the so-called so-called Saint Peter's Cathedral. Friends, this is horrendous. So for centuries, I realized I'm like, this is so familiar. Why do I? Then I thought, oh yes, I remember the the Adventists. The Adventists have it in their hymnal here in Serbia. So I thought, wait a second, the uh, Adventists have their hymnal, which is all Protestant anyway. So my my. My, my 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 thinking process continued like wait a second if they have it then the rest of the protestant world has it so for centuries protestants for centuries you have been singing this sing uh, thing uh, singing the same very same tune with the catholics anyway for whatever reason and now you're all loving this now you all live in this peaceful wonderful ecumenical unity which is disgusting in god's eyes by the way so you've forgotten even your you've forgotten even your Protestant identity, <laughs> let alone wow. let alone British and Americans and South Northwest mm -hmm. Europeans that you've all forgotten who you really are. You are not pagans. Mm -hmm. You are people who are people of God. But you just throughout the Bible we read how you all wanted to be pagans. You know all the time ever since God took. Israel out of Egypt. Israel constantly wanted to return to Egypt, but in their minds, in your minds, you returned to Egypt anyway by all of your horrible customs, which we saw later when the uh, separation between the house of Israel and the house of Judah occurred, when the first king of Israel, uh, 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 Jeroboam, set up golden calves from Egypt again to be worshipped in Dan and Bashan, and that was horrendous anyway. So, um, I'm just saying it's incredible how much uh, uh, even the secular history, the Protestant of their of, of their you know of their own the, the the secular Protestants have forgotten their history anyway. Not to mention that many of you Protestants in Northwest Europe and North America, and uh, uh, on the British in the British Commonwealth, many of you have got Israelitish origin, but you have forgotten who you are. So nowadays, in few in few. Only a few days you'll be singing again, Silent Night, 
But just keep in mind, as you're seeing it in your Protestant churches, that the, the same on the same night, the Vatican also, and the Pope, led by the Pope, sings that same thing. And what mm -hmm. is the Pope? Pope is one of the, Popery is one of the most abominable things in the world, and the Vatican, as far as I'm concerned, is the, uh, is the seat of all the evil. I That's mean, throughout right. their history, Vatican has done so much evil. No, it's not only the, the, the Holocaust. It's not only the Holocaust against the Jews. You made the first thing that comes to any people is the Holocaust. True. You have forgotten about you have forgotten about genocide that they've committed anyway. Right. You have all right. forgotten new people in the British Commonwealth and America and Canada and Australia and New Zealand. You have forgotten that your ancestors fled Europe. Why? Why did they flee Europe? Well, they fled Europe because they were fleeing the oppressive, horrible religious system which is called right. in the Bible in Revelation 17 Babylon meaning that it has all the characteristics of the ancient Babylon now keep in mind in history we have two Babylons there is one in Genesis chapter 10 that was initiated by the man called Nimrod who was the evil man who married his own mother by the way and all of that paganism started and sun worshiping started right there in the Old Testament times with him that's the ancient Babylon. Then later we have this Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon, which would be like a huge world empire. And we're seeing right now, right now, those of us living in Europe, we are seeing once again the resurrection of that very kind of Babylonian uh, Babylonian uh, entity, uh, create, which which is expressed by unifying European nations that have basically common Catholic heritage. By the way, so. Uh, and of course, they're now exercising their great power by, you know, extending their various influences around the world. And uh, as I've been, I've been recently realizing and telling my friends, the European Union is not only the continuation of the Roman Empire. The European Union, in fact, is the also a revival of Hitler's project, because that's, that's exactly what Hitler was doing. All of these. Uh, all of them now backing up Ukraine against Russia, this expansion to the east uh, in order to gain uh, cheap resources and cheap labor force. Lebensraum, the, 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 the life space, as Hitler's call it, is now yes. happening right now. And it's happening and it's not happening for no purpose. You know, there is a purpose in all of this. And in all of right. this, dear friends, Germany is once again exercising, flexing its muscle. But most of you Anglo-Saxons don't see that because you think that it's beautiful that Europe will be united. It will be a wonderful trade partner to you. You silly, silly, silly Israelites. The book of Hosea describes especially you English people as silly doves silly doves and unturned cake and that's exactly what you are you silly ones the 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 the, the rise of germany cannot bring anything good happened twice already in history and now it's happening for the third time but this time and as when in the previous two times they basically damaged the european continent this time is going to damage all of you anglo-saxon people because of all of your sins and because you have forgotten who you are and because when somebody comes along and tells you this is who you are you say oh no we want to be pagans we want we don't want to be god's people we don't want to follow the bible bible is an obsolete book we don't want to be god's people we don't want god of israel we want to be pagans is that what you want well that's exactly what is going to happen to you because that is what the bible says read leviticus 26 read deuteronomy 28 and you will see it there god says is that what you want well, because you did not want to serve me in all joy and in all abundance, then you're going to serve stone and 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 and, and wood, and 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 you're going to come into captivity. You know, by the and the worst of all pagans in Europe are coming to get you, my dear, my dear silly Israelites. And the worst of all pagans are called Germans because they're people who are cruel and have no regard. It says there, go read Leviticus 26. He's talking about you, Britain, and you, America, and you, Canada, and you, Australia, and you, New Zealand, because you're the leading people who are blessed by God so much above any other nations. Look what you have done with all those blessings. You've turned them into curses, you know. You, 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 celebrate, you celebrate occult 
awkward holidays like Christmas, like Halloween, you know, Easter. Yeah. Easter, look at the name. The name very tells you what it is. The goddess Easter, and you, but you don't care. We don't want to be God's people, you know. We want to be pagans. Is that what you want to be? Well, the pagans are going to get you and grab everything you have and destroy you completely. And according to the right. book of Ezekiel, only about 10% of you Anglo-Saxon people are going to survive. It's how stubborn, how stubborn you can be. Yeah. And it's our, you know, our collective memory, our collective, your memory, collective is memory so poor. And you don't tell me we, we, we don't want to be God's people. Well, you know what? Your hell really speaks about who you are. All right. that you have. Americans, your national seal speaks about who you are. You know, exactly. British, exactly. look at your, you could, our coat of arms and everything else. It speaks cloud, <laughs> loud and clear. You yes. are Israelites. You cannot be pagans all the way that you want to be. You can just do pagan stuff. And in the end, it look, it's going to clamp down on your upon your heads and, and well, bring curses on their heads. Yeah. As scripture yeah. says, you know, when you when we do those kinds of things, we are we are separated from our people. We are taken that's out right. of our people. That's and right. That's, that's, that's he'll do it again. That's why spiritually you have already become pagans, sadly. That's right. That's why you are. But physically nevertheless you're still descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Sorry to that's tell right. you those bad news if you think those are bad news. And because you're descendants and the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is still concerned about his people and their welfare. That's why he has right. to take you through a horrible, horrible corrective yes. punishment. And then after that, finally, you will be finally in your land, finally abhorring yourselves for all the that, abominations you're doing today. That's what it says in the Bible. And that's a clear Bible teaching, you know, and not yes. like this Look, in Isaiah, you know, where they sit, tell smooth things for you, for, for, for in yeah. the last several Sabbaths, I've been telling my, my, my audience, because yeah, there are about few of us, constantly keeping the Sabbath here and there's you know, all this about hundred now people in this region wow. and I keep telling them right. yes yes well the, the the statistics shows me from the from my YouTube channel I've got a YouTube channel biblical history Great. and statistics shows me that uh, out of 300 and some subscribers whatever uh, and I'll take a look some the statistics of you know how many Serbian messages because I've got messages in Serbian and in English there but the Serbian wow. messages has been been faithfully followed now by 55 plus, between 55 and 100 people. And I keep telling them all the time what is going to happen to the Anglo-Saxon world and other Israelites, including French people, by the way, who are, yes. you know, who are rebellious against God. And uh, then I, I, I and then in the, la well, in the last several Sabbaths, we analyzed the book of Jeremiah. And yes, yeah. the house of Judah speaking now of you. The book of Jeremiah speaks about you. It speaks about the Old Testament house of Judah, the Old Testament kingdom of Judah, and uh, all of the sins that the uh, Jews in the Old Testament committed against God. And even today, my dear descendants of the house of Judah, you are not better either. You're just so consumed with consumerism and secular things that it's 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 it, it is just tragic you know it's so tragic not to mention many other man-made customs that you have i mean right. you know you call you call you call the 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 the, the feast the day of trumpets you call the rosh hashanah you inherited all that from that babylon where you were in capture captivity for 70 years you have got all these various oh you you, you call your your name the name the name of the month from the bible you just stained so the month of tishri you know, uh, you call it the month yeah. of Tishri. That's actually Ethanim in in Hebrew. You seems to be the, you seem to describe your, to be despised. Sorry, your Hebrew heritage. Shame on you, the house of Judah. Shame yeah. on you. God said to you, you'll be always the head and never the tail. And look, you're becoming a tail. And as far as the house of house of house of Ephraim, let's call it that way. Ephraim, Ephraim is a silly dove. Go and read the book yeah. of Hosea. Ephraim is an unturned cake. Well, how can it not be unturned cake? Look at the silliness of, of the of the latest elections in the in the Britain. Just before, who is now the head of the Britain? Who is now the prime minister of the Britain? An Israelite? Certainly not. And before, just before he was elected, what happened with the British government? Did you realize that I don't, I don't know how many members of the British government were not even British citizens? How silly can you be, you? Yeah. Dumb people in the name of some human rights and whatever. What human rights? Those foreigners keep inundating your countries, imposing their culture the same. I was in Australia now for Sukkot, by the way, and I spent several, I spent a nice, lovely week in Australia. And I've been listening very closely to Australian people. They're also part of Ephraim uh, because they're, 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 their origin yeah. is Ephraimites. Anyone Ephraim is the leader of all the, all the 10 tribes. Then they tell me, 
The Australians have told me exactly, have shown me what had happened. Can you believe that? They just keep telling me, look, they said we joined the United Nations and now we are allowing the United Nations to rule our land because because of the decree of the United Nations, we have to export our natural gas to, I don't know which countries anyway, and we have to import it from other countries. Can you believe that? And then all of these foreigners all of a sudden are coming up. They say our, our government, our stupid, silly government is destroying the farmers. Uh, and uh, they're foreigners. Every every year there's a quota of foreigners getting in there. And they want now to give them the voting rights. The Australians tell me, how silly can you be? You, 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 you silly dove. That's what it says in, 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 in the book of Jose. An unturned cake. Ephraim is unturned cake. Foreigners are eating his power. And he doesn't even realize that. Well, exactly. That's exactly what's happening. What about the United States right now? Is with United States right now having these southern borders open widely, isn't that brilliant? Allowing all of I could just I could just imagine all of these all of these Latin American countries, Mexico, Guatemala, you know, Belize, yes. oh yeah. Venezuela, Venezuela, who uh, yeah. Cuba, and just opening up their prisons and saying, "Go, <laughs> go, yes. look, there is a wonderful, wonderful." Uh, uh, a paradise land for you just go just let us let, you know leave this thing and go this is how how idiotic can that be how, yeah, how, we are, how, how we are we are doing everything we possibly can to destroy ourselves to destroy your own land you right. stupid ones and you think God is watching from the from the from heaven from his third heaven saying oh how smart you are Australians hey how smart you are Americans and others because you respect human rights and everything else what human rights give them the voting rights and you'll see what will happen let them just change your 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 the other day what happened here in Serbia could you believe that many of those of course migrants they don't want to stay in Serbia because they just want to go to Western Europe uh, but we right. also, for some reason, I don't know how, and uh, from especially from the from the Bulgaria, as they pass through Bulgaria and so on, they just enter into Serbia. And I've seen that with my own eyes because this past summer I went to the uh, eastern part of Serbia. There is a beautiful mountainous region, uh, and I was helping my friend with his tending his sheep. Uh, he's a historian. He's a, he's a young historian. He is almost he's about to to become a doctor of history. But anyway, he has been studying and writing his master master work, you know, as he was tending his sheep and so on. So he became kind of very interesting. But we have been, we have known each other for about twelve years, even before he became nationwide kind of famous. Anyway, so I right. went just to visit his parents and. And every time he would come here in this part of the country, he would come and stay with me, of course, in my house. So uh, they wanted to see me. They wanted to meet me. So I went. And I've seen that. I've seen it myself. You know, at night, you just go to sleep. In the morning, you just let the, the, the sheep go out for pasture. What do you see? Oh, you see the migrants last night just pass through because they are just, you know, on the, on the, in the fields, in the forest. You can find, you can find uh, empty, empty plastic bottles of water. You can find blankets. You can find pieces of clothing, uh, backpacks, whatever. So they just keep, how do they enter this country? I don't know. And how come that our, our border is also leaking? But speaking of borders... But anyway, the, yeah. the, 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 they just go and then from, from this that southeast part, they just go to the north because they're in the north we are bordering with Hungary and Hungary is part of the European Union. And on the north we also border with, we are, we're bordering with Croatia, which is also part of the European Union. So they, that's what they want. But the other, a few, few, few weeks ago, you will not believe what happened. Uh, uh, two, two groups of those migrants, because they're just of different nationalities. So some are Moroccan, some are Afghani, Afghani some are whatever. Uh, two of those different groups, there was a, 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 <laughs> there was the, a war almost broke out at our, at the wow. north, the northernest, at the north of the country we have, we have mm -hmm. this, this settlement and then there is the border with Hungary anyway. So a war, they had, a, they had a war. Rifles, machine guns. How did they get those? I don't know. But all of a sudden, at night, there was a whole, there was a whole, uh, a conflict. There was a conflict between the two groups, and then the, the the local police had to come, needed enforcement. The local police needed enforcement, so that to stop them and arrest them, and and were but six hundred of them were arrested anyway, and some of them, interestingly enough, some of them because they're all Muslims, some of them had the. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, some, let's call it items, items with the uh, insignia of, uh, of, of, of Kosovo Liberation Army. Now, Kosovo Liberation Army is a terrorist organization that that murdered all kinds of non-Albanians in that southern Serbian province and declared unilaterally, declared independence with the help of, of the U.S. administration, democratic U.S. administration. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't Trump's, it was, it was so-called Democrats or Democrats, as, they, as I call them, that helped the Clintons and others. And finally, now yes. dead, which called Madeleine Albright. And um, they just helped the Albanians <clears throat> create another, you know, independent state. But anyway, so we've been having now troubles here. Now, of course, Germans backs up the same, that those same secessionists. So we are, we'll be having now troubles here with them. But we have now the migrants in the north of the country that just had a, 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 a you know, conflict shooting at one another. Could you believe that, friends? Well, those are kinds of people you have. Your your you, people are now streaming into your through your southern border. That's right. And all exactly. of the and, and interesting enough, when I, in my conversation with some of my some of my friends this this week, because I constantly communicate with uh, all of my friends, all of the Israelites and others around the world. Uh, interestingly enough, those streaming into your country are of what of what uh, 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 confession? They're Roman Catholics. Yes. Oh. Interesting, interesting, very interesting. Does that ring the bell? The Roman Catholics, one of these days, and the Germans are in, in majority, the Roman Catholics as well. But does it ring the ring the bell with you, friends? What's going to happen to America? So you have all kinds of people that you didn't even know who they are. You're just letting them in. You know, welcome to America. You know, welcome to welcome to paradise. And those people right. bringing in, you know, totally different values, totally different, totally different religious convictions. Anyway, oh, I'm sure Vatican is jumping up and down for joy. Oh, yes, of course it is. Yes, and you know, is. you know, we we are not observing the commandment that the Father gave us to go forth and multiply. That's right. We're not multiplying. America is not multiplying. America is. America has decided that in order to uh, follow the rules we're supposed to follow the rules that we should we should keep from having children because yes. you know it's it's irresponsible yes. to have children right. so what's happening all of those who are who are surging into our nation are having children right in and that, what's happening is is uh -huh. that we are rapidly rapidly being overwhelmed by yes. those that are invading us Yes, because they, you know, because they, uh, do you know why the Roman Roman Catholics forbid uh, birth control? Well, exactly for the same reason. You know, there is no birth control, so that means that more Roman Catholics will be born into this world. Oh, surprise, surprise. Oh, yes, did you know exactly. something else? If I if I remember correctly, I'm holding in my hand right now the Vatican Assassins written by Alberto Rivera. He was the, this is confession of a former Jesuit anyway. And I think you, they, they killed him in the end. They managed to kill him. But uh, the, the the Roman Catholics, of course, but he he converted to Protestantism uh, in the last century. I think there is a, there must be a, a video recording on him on YouTube or whatever. But I think in this book, uh, I have to re read it again. Uh, he mentioned something that is shocking to me, but I didn't know that uh, every Roman Catholic that you know is born into this world automatically is citizen of the state of Vatican. Oh. Okay. Even more interesting, isn't it? What we it's amazing how much we don't know about our enemies, you silly doves, you silly doves of 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 of, of Ephraim and other Israelites eating right. foreigners eating your power away. Well exactly. That's exactly happening, you know, happening now. And and we see it in Britain. The most outstanding we see that in Britain. Now it seems that the Queen Queen died, the Queen uh Elizabeth, she was the longest ruling ruling monarch uh, on the throne of David, by the way, because the throne, and she knew that she was the keeper of the throne of David. And all of her family, by the way, knows that they're <laughs> descendants of David. Don't be, don't be fooled. You know, they, I know it for, I know it for a fact because some of my friends and acquaintances learned it. Even the current uh, king, Charles, uh, Charles III, he knows that he's a descendant of David. So the whole royal family knew that Queen Elizabeth was well educated, and she knew that anyway. Uh, now that she did, died, as if all of a sudden, as if all of a sudden, the gates of hell, <laughs> figuratively, yeah. by the way, I don't believe in hell, as if the gates of hell and the gates of abyss have opened up for this destruction and 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 and, and terror. 
pouring into Australia, into even America and so on. This is just absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Anyway, but we, uh, forgive me friends for ranting a little bit about this. I have to because, you know, I always get, I always get upset when this winter, winter season and festivity come around, come along and I see, I see the House of Israel, the House of Israel basically, you know, going berserk with those customs that have nothing to do with their identity. So uh, you'll forgive me for this rant. The uh, thing was, I mentioned the Germans, I mentioned the Vatican. You have to understand that the uh, Germans and the Vatican are still the powers and the central powers, let's call them the axis powers of European integration. And that's that's simply, that is simply so, but many people don't see it anymore. Many people don't, don't, don't understand that and many people think that European integration is something beautiful. <clears throat> that ecumenism led by the Pope and Vatican and the uh, Catholic Church is something so great. The people finally, who are all Christians, are now getting together. Well, you're not all Christians. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry to <laughs> inform you. Yeah. Those of you who believe you're Christians, you're not Christians. Most of you are just uh, followers of Constantine's version of Christianity. You're basically pagans. As long as you practice pagan things and have pagan, pagan beliefs, like immortality of the soul, uh, heaven, hell, and all this, all the rest. Uh, oh yes, and purgatory. Don't forget purgatory, please. <laughs> right, purgatory. Exactly right. My word, what a wonderful, what a wonderful uh, uh, imagination. What a rich right. imagination people have. Purgatory and stuff. And well, by the way, many of those things were inherited from Egypt. Interestingly enough. Egypt, out of which God rescued his people. Israel, um, heaven, hell, purgatory, and all of the rest, all of the stuff, various other pagan things, were just yeah. first taken over by the Babylon, Babylonian Empire. And then, of course, Babylon always enriches that with their own, their own ideas. Then it was taken right. over by the Roman Empire and Greek Empire, so the... And then Greeks and Romans kind of enriched it with their own ideas. And then the Romans, right. of course, because Greeks were regarded to be a civilized people, the, 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 the first civilized nation, all of that rubbish. Romans, <laughs> because it is rubbish. Because yeah. I know, yeah, we, we, you know, we, we border with the Greek nation now. Come on, we know about the Greece here many more, many more things than most of you in the world, the rest of you in the world. And then the Romans took over many of those ideas and then came... Right. Until the end, Pontifex Maximus Constantine the Great. Oh, could you believe that? He had, and interestingly enough, he organized the first, the first, uh, how would you call that? Uh, in in, in uh, the, 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 the uh, well, the word Catholicus in, in Latin means um, all, all world. Oh, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You, give me, yeah give universal. Me, universal, yeah. that's the word. Yeah. Give me the word. Yes, yeah. because there is one in Eastern sphere uh, it's also called cosmos or the uh, you know universal anyway so right. constantine organizes the first universal council of nicaea in 325 and what does he do he just all of those pagan things inherited from babylon inherited from rome inherited from egypt he just makes them makes them christian dogmas trinity uh he just kicks out passover and replaces with Easter, he enforces Sunday. And of course, by the way, the House of Judah, one thing, the House of Judah knows that, but the House of Israel doesn't seem to understand that. One of the staunchest uh, anti-Semite, as far as I know, is the Constantine the Great, because he, he made sure that whatever seemed resembled anything Jewish must be eliminated from the so-called New Testament Christianity, and that is exact. That's how he replaced the Easter with the uh, replaced the Passover with Easter. That's how yeah. he imposed Trinity. That's how he replaced he replaced Sun uh, Sabbath with Sunday, and all of that rubbish. And all of you people, be Israelite or not, all of you follow those customs, and you think you're Christians? No, you're not. You're not Christians because as long as you practice, you know, pagan things, you cannot be Christians anyway. Because yeah, he, he God was, says those things are yeah, he, abomination in his eyes. God of Israel says right. so. That's mm -hmm. right. He he was the ultimate anti-Semite. Yes. I he mean was. unbelievable. When you when well, people look he, at that 
he was the one yeah, who actually gave birth, gave birth to all the all, the, all, the, all these other anti-Semites, you know. Yeah. And the much right. of hatred for the Jewish people basically stems from Constantine. Uh, let, l- right. let the whole, let the whole, my, let let my despair be worse. Is that he was born in Serbia, by the way, and his birth town. Uh, there is a there is a street named the Boulevard of the Holy. Emperor Constantine, I'm like, oh my word! You see, the level of deception is incredible. He's a holy, he's a holy emperor. Can you believe that? That's and the Serbian people regard him as a saint. Third of June is the uh, day dedicated to him as a saint, and not even let let the, let the insult be even worse. They don't think he is only a saint, but they think that he's equal to the apostles, because. Oh, wow. Liber, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't believe the level of deception of this bestial Europe. You know, the level of deception. Uh, the uh, you see, the Roman Catholic Church, interestingly enough, considers his mother to be a saint, not him, because he wasn't, he was just a criminal anyway and pagan to right. the end. His mother just had a, 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 a pilgrimage to this holy land. His mother supposedly found the cross on which Christ was, Christ was crucified and whatever. So she kind of she is regarded by the Catholics. They only accept her as as a saint, as wrong as <laughs> wrong as it is. Wow. Uh, the, the, the Eastern Eastern European world, meaning Russians and others and Serbians, of course, they consider him to be a saint. Uh, his mother as well, but he is a saint equal to the apostles. You see, his rank is equal. Could you could you just could you just believe the culture in which one has to live and endure all of that mm. i've been i've been uh i've been I, I was ill the last this past last month and for most of this time i've been kind of having some health issues uh, but i've been as you probably know i mentioned that many times i i i, I wrote already the, the uh the the, the 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 most of that booklet book on him and what uh-huh. he did in serbian and what he did to the true religion because serbian people are biblically literate you know they they, they grow up with, with traditions of course traditions right. he he imposed they grow up with traditions they've got no idea what's written in the bible so they're completely ignorant and i'm with this book booklet i'll be trying to educate at least those who want to be educated anyway but right. uh, i've got a few more sources to go through and uh, and uh, and have for it'll be for the first time in Serbian history, there'll be a book. There'll be a book about the true Constantine. Just like last year, I've. Uh, I still hope that I'll be able to publish that book in more copies. The the only book about the Passover, the true Christian Passover. I say Christian because uh, those who follow the Passover on the same on, on the same date and in the same way, uh, they uh, they they don't they don't they don't keep it on the Jewish seder. Supper because Jewish said the supper is when Israelites left Egypt. Uh, others, when I say Christian, I mean those who keep it on the 14th when it was the uh, G- Israelites were still in Egypt when they kept their first Passover. Right. So anyway, uh, the the but anyway in that booklet I ex- I explain exactly who changed the Passover for Easter, and I explain what the Passover entails and what it means and so on. This is the first time. So that 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 was last year. So that's the first. Uh, text, let's call it text, ever published in my native tongue that speaks about the true Passover. Nobody has ever done it because nobody understands it anyway. Nobody knows wow. what it means and so on. That's how illiterate is the Serbian nation. Let alone that uh, many of them have no idea that the uh, Orthodox countries and Orthodox churches like that, that one in Ethiopia, the Copts in Egypt, uh, and all of these other uh, Orthodox, uh, Orthodox countries, Russians, Ukrainians, uh, mm-hmm. and Serbs, all those Orthodox churches are actually were the ones who resisted for a long time Sunday keeping. They kept Sabbath for a long, long, long time and wow. then succumbed. Yeah, then they succumbed to the influence of Rome and began keeping, keeping Sunday. Even to this day, there is a liturgy on. On Saturday afternoon, there is a there is a liturgy in Serbian Orthodox churches. Uh, you know, they they have a liturgy on Saturday, and then on Sunday morning, on Saturday uh, afternoon. Why do they still have? Well, in honor to the, in honor, to the fact that they once upon, <laughs> once upon a time, sometimes in the past they kept Sabbath anyway. I mean, you yeah. wouldn't believe yeah. that 
the, the Sabbath was the official day of rest in Ethiopia all the way up to the 8th century. Wow. All the way up, official day of rest was the Sabbath, and the Jesuits and the Roman Catholics were kicked out of Ethiopia by, by one of their kings. I mean, it's so funny to think about it from this perspective today, <laughs> you know. So they were kicked out, you know, by this one of those yes. Ethiopian, Ethiopian kings. And that's probably the line that came from the Queen of Sheba. You, you remember in the Bible, the Queen of Sheba went to Solomon because she was admiring his his uh, his his wisdom and there is a there is a well whether it's a myth or a historical historical fact that she when she returns she conceived with solomon and she gave birth to a uh, to a son who became the first ethiopian king anyway uh and and you might remember the this reggae movement claiming that black people are israelites or whatever and uh there was this yeah. Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie, the, 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 the funny, strange king of Ethiopia in the past, who also kind of claimed some kind of relations with, with Israel, whatever. Well, it might be true, because they might be, that might be the line from the Solomon yeah. and Queen of Sheba. But in right. any case, up to the 8th century, uh, Sabbath was the official day of rest in Ethiopia. Quite, quite mm -hmm. amazing, you know. And even to this day, even though nowadays Ethiopia is, is a Muslim country, you have this Ethiopian Orthodox Church, interesting enough, like you have Orthodox Copts in Egypt. So they're all basically descendants from those who kept the Sabbath uh, in the past. And, and isn't, it, it, isn't it interesting how so many different nations worldwide call, quote-unquote, Saturday, Yes, Sabado, Sabado, or exactly. Shabbat, yeah, or I mean, they, Shabbat, they, which is all from yeah. the Sabbath. yeah. Well, Subota in 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 Russian and Serbian, right. Subota comes from the uh, from the Latin word Sabata, which means again from Shabbat, meaning the the rest. Indeed, uh, right. every nation every nation has Sabado is in Spanish, of course. I think in all of those Roman yeah. languages, uh, Portuguese is about the same. Uh, can't remember the German name name for it anyway. But, but isn't that uh, amazing? I mean, I mean, isn't that isn't that an illustration? Isn't that proof and illustration? Yeah. yeah but no, but no, my dear, my dear pagans, you <laughs> want to keep Sunday, the day of the sun, yeah, and you think it's the day of the Lord? No, it's not. The Lord is not the sun god anyway. Has never been. Will never be anyway. That's and, right. Yeshua observed. Yeshua observed Shabbat. Come on, of guys. You observe Shabbat. Does it say? <laughs> even in the New Testament, we see how many times do you see in the Book of Acts? Let's see, after Yeshua. Well, some people say, well, but after Yeshua, the church. Oh, really? Well, look, read the book of Acts and, and count how many times the Apostle Paul, who is main, the main character in the book of Acts, even though there are others, but he is the main, usually he is, uh, mostly his ministry is described. Look how many the Apostle Paul, how many times he kept the Sabbath. Just look at it. Just let's, let's, let's just illustrate Thessalonians. Thessalonians are a case in point, as one of my good friends used to say. <laughs> a big intellectual, a right. Jew, by, a Jew by origin, by the way. A case in point <laughs> is Thessalonians. They heard there were Thessalonians, there were many Jews and non-Jews who just, you know, kept the Sabbath there, and the, the, the Apostle Paul preached, and then many of them were so excited and so on, and they just, they just asked him to come, not to come on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday. No, he said that they asked him to come the next Sabbath to preach. The next ah. Sabbath, yes, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. By the way, the first, the first epistle of of of, of the Apostle Paul, uh, the first one that he wrote was the Epistle to Thessalonians. Interesting enough, yes. So, in any case, my dear pagans, Israelites, and others, uh, you can just you have no arguments in 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 uh, you know uh, when you face the true facts, there is no arguments, and all of those your arguments simply are just uh, lies and they dissipate and you're not followers sadly you're not christians you're just followers of constantine the great who until the end of his uh, life held the title pontifex maximus meaning the uh, the high priest of all paganism yes, so that's exactly. who, that's who you who you serve and that's who you believe and as many of you my dear my dear jewish jewish compatriots let's call them that way we all love you by the way jewish people uh yeah we know there are those who we understand the history of christianity and so on but you cannot you cannot use that and think that everybody hates you who calls themselves follows yeah. that's not the case exactly. 
and you cannot you cannot believe some of the lies that people sadly even your rabbis tell you and i heard that in jerusalem back in 2000 and was it 17 no six when we were you and i it was may i remember it was may but yes, <laughs> 16, yes. it was 16 2016 i think uh gene and i were there and there was a conference very interesting conference yes. and i heard all 2017 2017 nevertheless I cannot mm -hmm. believe some of the things I've heard out of the out of or out of the those the, the, the mouth of the rabbis, like that yeah. the Constantine mm -hmm. was the one who canonized the New Testament. Jewish friends, that's lie. Uh, that uh, <laughs> the the synagogue of Satan mentioned in the Book of Revelation is uh, uh, expression of hatred toward. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me tell you, the Apostle Paul writes in Romans that not Jews who are by flesh are Jews only, that they're Jews who are those in their hearts. Right. And I think I think Gene, right. I, I think Gene would would agree with me that me and him and all these others who are keeping the Torah uh, uh, and followers, we are followers of Yeshua, but we keep the Torah. I would think we are Jews also in hearts. Even though we're not in flesh, we're not circumcised, but nevertheless, we're Jews in hearts. And the Apostle Paul explains that. So uh, the true, in the New Testament terminology, the true Jews would be those who keep the Torah and those who whose hearts are circumcised, <laughs> not That's right. their flesh. Yeah. Right. And there are many of us in the world, I would say, and I think a core, the, a core audience of this program will be those people. So we are also called Jews, spiritual Jews, you see. And when the uh, book of Revelation describes the synagogue of Satan, it's not the synagogue of Jewish people by, by flesh, but the Jewish people by heart, meaning that those who claim to be true followers of Yeshua and hate the Torah and don't keep and keep all of this paganism, they're just fake. Fake Jews, just like they're fake Christians, you know, they're false. That's what it is. The yes. true Jews, uh, the do those who are not of the synagogue of Satan, are those who are Jews who may not be Jews by origin, but they are Jews by, in their hearts, their hearts are circumcised and they're spiritual Jews, and that's who we are. And being spiritual Jews, we cannot, of course, hate our Jewish brothers, right? Right. So yeah, yeah exactly. Our Jewish brothers are our brothers. Yeah, truly brothers, are our brothers. Truly our brothers, and uh, yeah. that's how I teach my congregation here in Serbia and all of their, my listeners in Europe and elsewhere. I've got many listeners, I think, even in the States, which is very, which is very surprising and very, very commendable. So I teach my all of those, my audience, that you know, the Jewish brothers are Jewish brothers. But we realize yeah. your we realize your shortcomings are Jewish brothers, just like we realize the shortcomings of the house of Israel or of the right. house of Ephraim anyway, because the Bible describes those shortcomings. And in the past several Sabbaths, I've been I've been reading the book of uh, book of Jeremiah, as he right. as as the prophet was pointing out to the king, to the priests, to the false prophets, and to all the people of Judah in the Old Testament. He was pointing out their sins, and I've been making parallels of those sins with the uh these so-called new new testament european societies you know i've been just i've been just drawing and 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 the sins of the nation where i live i've been i've been basically drawing the parallels to show the people and illustrate to them why what have they done against the eternal and why uh, their end is coming because europe is not right now flexing its muscle but the prophecy for europe is that europe is going to come to its end because the, there is another power rising up in your in, right before our eyes, and we call it here in Europe. We call it the Euro Asian Union, Euro Asian Union, because parts of Russia, as you know, are uh, Russia is uh, parts of Russia are um, until Ural. It's a European uh, European portion of their land, and then after Ural, the mountains of Ural is the Asian portion of the land. Russia and China have got strategic relations now. The highest they're enjoying the highest level of their strategic, military, and other alliance that was announced by both of those administrations. Uh, there is this uh, Southeast Bloc uh, that, uh, well, in that bloc, is a country that doesn't love very much Americans because of all the things called Vietnam. Oh, surprise, surprise! Yeah. So we have got well, well, the Asians also have the, 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 the they're the numerous continent anyway. Chinese are now the. Uh, most populated country in the world. The right, be right behind them is who else? India. Interesting, yes. interesting. They're all connected now. India, China, Russia, uh, the BRICS countries, mm -hmm. even Brazil, even South Africa is there. Uh, but this, 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 this uh, Southeast Basin 
the Philippines would be the only the exception. Uh, they're the only nominal Christian nation. All these others are kind of Muslims and and and, and of other religions anyway, Buddhists, whatever. So uh, right. Russia is now the leader of this, uh, basically, of this new alliance. And that's the alliance that is going to finally, uh, when provoked by Europe, because, you know, history repeats itself. We told, we said this in this program so many times. History is going to repeat itself. You may wonder how. Well, how? Well, it says in the book of Daniel that uh, this European beast, uh, also described as king of the north, and also described as the first, the first beast, uh, the uh, civic beast in Book of Revelation, chapter thirteen. And then we have another beast, religious, or who is basically called the false prophet, religious, religious beast, Pope, whoever he will be, anyway, at the end time. So uh, they'll just make the same mistake that Hitler did, that Napoleon did before Hitler. They'll just go to attack and uh, surround Moscow. That will be their deadly, their deadly, deadly mistake, because then all of a sudden we have these Euro-Asian blocks of people moving, <laughs> moving toward Europe and moving toward the middle, the Middle East because of the uh, Battle of Armageddon, and that is when the uh, uh, Euphrates is going to be dried up to allow this Eastern Asiatic nations and 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 military those two hundred. How was it? Two hundred uh, thousand, no, two hundred million yeah, people. Yeah. Only yeah, people. Yeah, two hundred million man and army. Man and army. Yeah. Only you see, only the most populous yeah. countries can can gather such an army. No Chinese, right. Indians, plus Russians yes. and all of the other other these Southeast Asian blocks. There you go. And uh, with that army, that army comes is going to Armageddon. In one hand, on the other hand, they're going to. Just like Russians marched straight to Berlin, but this time, according to the Book of Joel, this time it's going to be this army, Euro Asian army, going to be so angry and mad that, as it says in Joel, before them is the uh, the land is like the Garden of Eden, and behind them is just stubble. So yeah. European nations uh, who will be joyfully destroying the state of Israel as well, because that's prophesied. We remember reading. The words of Yeshua in the New Testament, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by the armies, whose armies will be those? Well, European armies, of course. Uh, when you see them, know that the, the day for it, uh, know that the day has come for it to become desolate. That's about Jerusalem, meaning that the whole state of Israel is going to be occupied. And of course, who will be leading those European armies? The new peacekeeping force in the world called Germans. Friends here in Europe, we are seeing them attempting all the time to falsify the history. All the time they're trying now to kind of, they're now trying to become the, they're not blaming Russian, Russians for being terrorists, all this, that and the other, really. In the meantime, uh, I mean, they're blaming the Russians, they're trying now to, sub, to subvert the history and now they're trying to uh, elevate themselves as the peace-loving and peacekeeping nation. Yeah, sure. Those of you who want to be deceived by that, be you deceived. But that's your choice. Uh, the state of Israel has got very close relations with Germany today. Uh, the rest of you, you know how much Germany is. The Anglo-Saxon world believes Germany is their ally. Yes, sure. Germans cannot stand you, by the way. They're just waiting for the right appropriate moment to end your civilization. But God is going, the Almighty is going to allow that to happen because, not because they hate you, but because of the sins of you, House of Israel, in North America and in the British Isles, and in the ends of the of the of the earth, and the how do they say the coasts of the the coastal lands like well, who are the coastal lands? New Zealanders in Australia. Good morning <laughs> or good evening, whatever. It's you. So Germany is going to be a mighty power anyway. But uh, the end of Germany, before Yeshua returns, will be these Euro-Asian Euro -Asian armies that will just move. And they're just going to basically, on their way to Berlin, they're going to make stubbles all over the place. And frankly, yes. Europeans, you, you all deserve that anyway because of, because of the, 
because of your tremendous, tremendous paganism and because of all the various people that you have murdered in the last centuries. Pogroms, well, by the way, pogroms against the Jews in Europe. Who was leading the pogroms? The Roman Catholic clergy. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> pogroms. Yeah. Um, uh, various genocides committed against anti-Catholics. You've all deserved it, Europeans, because once again you're going to worship your your military political leader who is going to come up soon, very soon, and it's all in relations and being tied up to uh, the Middle East troubles and conflict that is also coming up. Yeah, uh, we seem to be kind of digressing of, of the topic, but that's not the case. I'm just mentioning all these various things, friends, for all of you to connect the dot and hope. My hope is that some of you Israelites will realize who you are and repent and turn to God of Israel. Otherwise, there is no way. There is no other. There is. I've been saying for this Sabbath, this past Sabbath, there is no way. There is no solution. There is no other way. I've been telling this to the Serbian nation, to this region, and to anybody else. There is no way. There is no way that you can be rescued from all of those things happening and coming up unless you turn to God of Israel in repentance and change your wrong ways and stop lying yes. your kids that Santa Claus does exist. I'm so, oh, I'm so, I'm so, ah, uh, about this horrible. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing that Santa Claus, you know, by the way, how, how is the name Santa Claus came into English? Do you know, Gene? Perhaps our friends will find it very interesting to know that it was St. Nicholas, uh, St. Nicholas celebrated by the Dutch people and the Dutch immigrants to the States had this St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas, and later it was it was shortened to Santa Claus. So they are the ones who brought that thing. And St. Nicholas is basically a, 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 a deity related to Saturn, the most evil of all the all of these zodiac signs, you know, it's all of the yeah. paganism. It's amazing, and people just people just read horoscope. Oh, let's let's see today. What does the press say about the horoscope? Let's see. Well, how will be my day? You know, will it be a lucky one, unlucky one, healthy, unhealthy, whatever? But anyway, back to Santa Claus. Santa Claus is the Greek mythology, friends. And I've been repeating this in Serbian, I think, until because I cannot stand the fact that people just promote such an evil deity, you know, every single year. Santa Claus is from the Greek mythology. It's book is God Kronos. From that word we get chronology and chronicles in, in our languages. Anyway, he's God Kronos, the god of time, but he's like, a, yeah, he looks like an, an old bearded, you know, kind of deity with a seed by which he's seeing and, and taking young children's lives. Horrible thing. Yes. So that's such a disgusting thing. And every single time around this, in December, you see people buying Santa Claus, you know, Santa Claus cardboard images, and then they're just sticking on their windows. That's that's that that that's the uh, popular custom here in my country. And then you know, Santa Claus. There are those uh, lovely lovely songs of Santa Claus coming, you know, coming to bring gifts to kids. And he knows who is good. He knows who is bad. He knows everything. You know, he's God, probably, obviously. And it's amazing how this whole and and in uh, they call him. Uncle Frost is Serbian language. Would you believe that in Russian as well, in Ukrainian, in all the Slavic languages, he's Uncle Frost <laughs> or Grandpa Frost. That's how they call him. So he he's portrayed as a benign, benign, benign old old man bringing gifts and stuff. Meanwhile, all the time he's just a evil deity from Greek mythology. And people just people just promote that evil deity. They 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 tell their children lies about that. If your children would come home and tell you a lie, you would punish them, right? But when you tell them lies about Santa Claus bringing gifts, it doesn't matter. You think it doesn't matter? Oh, it does matter with God. You think it doesn't matter? It does matter very much with God, my dear friends. Yes. And I'm so irritated by this every single year around the New Year's Roman New Year, by the way. That's what you all keep. Roman, it's Roman New Year, you know, it's right. not, you know, God's New Year yeah. starts in the spring anyway, it's written there in the Bible in the month of Abib, which will be March, April, you know, but you all keep Roman New Year anyway, and here comes this Greek horrible disgusting deity, and some children, at least in my country, would scream and 
run away from Santa Claus, but their parents say, well, oh, no, it's Santa Claus, you know. So they push their son, they push their children into the into the arms of of this this horrible, disgusting, evil deity. And you want your children, you want your children mm -hmm. to be blessed and so on. The other the, oh, the other Sabbath, I just climbed down on all the Serbian parents and said, shame on all of you. I said, you're giving yeah. your children over to curse. You're, you're, you're yeah. pushing them, pushing your children over to, to, to Santa Claus arms. Shame on you. And, and you know, like I, I find children. it interesting. I find it interesting that, that Santa is an anagram of Satan. Satan, exactly. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. Oh, even more interesting. And uh, yes. that's, that's what you do. And you, you, you call yourself Christians? No, forget about that, friends. You're not Christians. You're not Christians. Right. You're followers of Satan. You're followers of Santa Claus. You're followers of lies and paganism that was pushed upon us by the, the uh, Egyptians, Romans, Greeks. You name it. Oh, oh! I didn't tell you the late, the latest fad. Oh my! Oh, as if it is not that we have Santa Claus that was brought to us mostly by this Coca-Cola. Lori, <laughs> oh. <laughs> now these days Yisk, Yisk is a, a store chain by uh, owned by Denmark, a Danish Danish company here. Well, it's uh -huh. like a, like a big store, <laughs> all kinds of things that you may find, and they've got these 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 uh, you call them garden garden elves, I think, garden elves. Uh, Yisk has announced this year to the Serbian public that their New Year program is now expanded. These garden elves are actually bringing good luck and they're bringing oh, happiness no. and joy to your children. So don't just buy them for your gardens, buy them for your children as well. Let your children sleep with those elves because they'll bring them joy and happiness. Could you believe that? So as if, we, so it's as if it is not enough that we have all the, uh, 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 how would I say, uh, Slavic, Slavic paganism, enough of Slavic paganism in our countries. Now we have also Santa Claus, you know, the, the, the paganism from Greeks and others. And now we have the Scandinavian paganism, you know, being, being broadcast to our nation. And I was like, I was like, oh my word. And people, of course, but people, you know, it's nice to people. And people just, Serbian people, just like any other people, want to follow the advertisements and, and, and the, the latest fashion fads. So I'm just... I'm just waiting now for them to start buying those elves, ah, those wow. garden elves, and, and and this is horrible. It will probably come to America one of these days. But I mean, it's it's how terrible. How ah, where is the end of this paganism? Well, the end is with yeah. Yeshua's return anyway. But at the same yes. time, you'll have a power. You'll have a power that's going to make this paganism a law, friends. Our European power led by the Germans is going to be legislative. They already have it in their constitution. Those of you waiting for the mark of the beast, don't wait anymore. It's there. It's here. It is in Europe. It is in European. It is in German constitution, which they call basic law. You don't believe it? Go oh, go on internet. Go on internet, log in, and just, just type German constitution. There is a translation of that constitution in English. It's called the basic law in Germany. And I think it's, uh, I'll now miss which, which article, but anyway, article, whatever article it is, they're finally there. Sunday and Christian holidays are specially protected. Uh, I can't remember the rest, the rest of the phrase is like for promoting good values or whatever. They're specially protected already in Germany. Those of you who are not informed, try to uh, hang up your washing up on Germany and wash your car on Sunday. Try it. There comes the Polizei. Heinz Wein, the Polizei comes, writes down the fine. Why is the fine? You are disturbing. Hear this. The Sunday rest. Did you know this? Did you know this? Anglo-Saxons who treat Germany as your allies. Did you know this? Well, now you do. So don't look for the don't look for the mark of the beast anymore. If you think it's Sunday, it's overall paganism anyway, which is mostly uh, idolatry, which is basically being expressed very vividly on Sundays. No wonder. But if you've been looking for the mark of the beast, it's here. It's in Europe. It's in German, your ally. And one of these days, they've been trying to push this Sunday kind of rest all over the Europe. One of these days, wait just for that. It's going to become a law. 
And all of you don't, who do not keep who do not keep those do not keep those things. I've been warning now all the people here and here in, in in Serbia as well. I said all of us will be one of these days on the headlines because we will be the enemies of the state. Oh, what a shock! Are you shocked? Be shocked. Ian, you should be. But the mark of the beast. Don't look for it anymore. It's here. It's right there in German constitution. And constitution. What is the constitution? The highest legal act of one country. So the Germans already have it. And they're just pushing it all, all over the European continent. They're pushing for, for example, for all the stores to be closed on Sunday. Huh. And you silly ones, my silly doves, you'll be probably, your government sooner or later going to follow the same kind of fashion. They may just, uh, they may just make, you know, Sunday it illegal, any trade on Sunday, just like they're make, making illegal like honey. I was, I was, I almost fainted when I heard that honey home produced, naturally produced honey. It's illegal to trade that in Britain. Do, do you know that? Do you know that, Gene? You, you know that now. So mm. we have pharmacomafia destroying us, this COVID-19 destroying you. You're, you're stupid. Your you're, you're, you're genocidal government is pushing all kinds, of, all kinds of stupid laws against your own nations. And one of these days, they're going to push, of course, for the... Uh, True Christianity, let's call it Christianity, for true Christianity to be outlawed. And for this idolatry, because what is Christmas, what is Easter, what is Sunday? Idolatry, idolatry, idolatry. And the first commandments of God goes against idolatry. They're going to push it on your nations. And you're going to be declared, all of you keeping Sabbath and so on, you're going to be declared the enemies of the state, the criminals. Where wow. do we know that? What, what did what did what did do what did Yeshua say in you know, what did Jesus Christ say in the New Testament? And all the nations will hate you for my name's sake. Well, here am I am telling you, my dear friends, from what I can see, how all these nations are going to hate you for His name's sake, of course. And to many of you, Negro Saxon will be strange. How come we are a country that you know we 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 embedded the the the, 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 the human rights? Yes, except for the unborn babies. You know, in the Bible, it says that they run to shed innocent blood. What can that be in our modern term? Abortion, of course. What else? Yes. Because they're innocent people. Innocent blood is being shed every single day, every single day in the United States, in thousands. In Australia, the same. In Canada, the same. In New Zealand, the same. In Europe, of course, including my nation. So, my friends... We're going to be hating well, those of us who keep the law of God. I'm, I'm telling you, don't be surprised. And don't look for the mark of the beast. You know, the, the Adventists are so funny. The, uh, several years ago, the Pope was going to visit Congress, American Congress. Was it this Pope? I think it was this Pope anyway. Then they come the Adventists. Oh, he's now going to proclaim the Sunday laws. I'm like, you silly ones. I said to them, you don't even know, and you should. You don't even know that the Sunday law is already there. It's there in Germany. It's not in Congress. It's not in America. Not yet. But it's there in Germany right there. You can be fined for disturbing Sunday rest. You know, if you wash your car, that's disturbing Sunday rest. Hey, people, wake up. The House of Israel, do you hear me? Wake up. Washing your car in Germany on Sunday is disturbing. Hanging up your washing up. It's disturbing. I guess the uh, washing machines are disturbing Sunday rest, and then you're wow. you're guilty of you're guilty of disturbing Sunday rest. Friends, wake up! The mark of the beast. Those of you who have these Adventist perhaps influence, waiting for the mark of the beast. Don't wait for the mark of the beast, and don't wait for Congress to declare the mark of the beast. It doesn't have to. The mark of the beast is right there already in Germany. In German basic law or constitution go find it download it read it with your own eyes because they've got it translated into english that's how i found it out as well i heard rumors well that song rumor has it you know so the rumor has it. i heard rumors there's you know there's a strict <laughs> yeah i'm like a rumor as you know there's a strict sunday uh sunday kind of uh well uh, a Sunday, let's say, administration being, you know, being applied in Germany. So, you know, I'm like, really? Well, yes, there. I'm like, well, there must be a basic because Germans are very, uh, very much 
and some other nations, Hungarians as well, for example, they very much stick to the law. You know, when they want to impose something, they stick to the law. And we know how Germans do it anyway. So I just went, I'm like, okay, let me just see. Let me see, German constitution. Okay, all right, let's down, do we have it? Yeah, there was one in Germany. All right, fine. I had a friend who spoke German and she grew up in Germany. So I'm like, Lydia, can you just take a look at this? And this, can you just, uh, he just gave me a Serbian rendering of this law. She did it. Oh, but surprise, surprise. Here is the German constitution in English. All right, wonderful. So I download the same. And there is a nice, always, always nice description that, you know, uh, they call they call their constitution basic law. And here's the basic law in English, translated into English. Wonderful. And I find the same, same article. I think it's article 192 or something. But in any way, you'll find it anyway. Uh, one of these days we can even dedicate uh, half of our program to that and I can just read it to you right out of their constitution, out of horse's mouth, as you would say. It's there. Yeah. It's there. Sunday, specially protected by the law. And bus, Sunday. by the way, I realized <clears throat> in the description of that Sunday, it says that that law was uh, inherited from the Weimar Republic. The Weimar Republic, for those of you who don't know, that was the republic before Hitler rose into power. Uh, Germans kind of uh, uh, recuperated from the First World War, and then they created, you know, they created Weimar Republic anyway, and that republic was all the way up to Hitler's rose to power. So you see, even in the Weimar Republic, they had that law that Sunday was specially protected, and then not only Sunday, but also Christian holidays. Your lovely Easter and your lovely Christmas that you're just all going to keep in a while. Silly doves, silly doves and unturned cakes. Ah, really silly doves because you don't know what to be. You you don't want to be Christians. You want to be pagans. You don't care who you are. How tragic, how terrible. How sad. I agree. How sad. How sad. You know when God says when God says to Buku, <laughs> to Ezekiel, to Ezekiel, was it? Go. He says, tell these people this. Tell them in their language. Yes, and God says, yes, I know they will not heed you. If there were people of foreign language, they would have heeded you. But these people are rebellious people, rebellious house of Israel. They're not going to heed you. So I know you'll probably despise and probably, you know, listen to all of this. Those who listen and think, well, well, interesting, but a bunch of rubbish. What does that have to do with our lives? Well, it has to do with your lives. Because very soon the Jacob's trouble, as described in the book of Jeremiah 30, was it chapter 30, verse 7, as far as I remember, is going to happen to all of you. And it's going to affect every one of your lives. All of you silly house of Israel and also the house of Judah. And the house of Judah don't tell me what is well we keep the Torah. No, you don't keep the Torah. You keep your own tradition as well. And call right. and call the names and call the, 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 the names of your God. You call them by, by Babylonian names. You know, Rosh Hashanah. Where do you find Rosh Hashanah in the Torah? You tell me. Right. And not only that, but, but uh, because of, of Judah's nasty experience in, in uh, Babylon, they also call, they, they use the term Hashem yes. to describe him, which yes. that's, that is an insult. That is an that's, insult. That's refusing to call him by his name, even exactly. though he tells us exactly. to do He's that. not Hashem. He has his name. Right. And in fact, he has got various names that describe his character in the Old Testament. I prefer El Shaddai, for example. That's beautiful. Yeah, There's a yeah. beautiful song, El Shaddai, Erkam Kana, Donai, whatever. It's a nice song anyway. It's beautiful. I prefer El Shaddai, God Almighty. That's what he is. But you've created other gods, you house of Judah. You've created your cars and your lovely state of Israel, which is beautiful, by the way. But, you know, to you and your IDF and everything else, to you, that's just like the house of Israel has done exactly the same. American military, British, you know, and then they come to me and say, but America is the strongest nation in the world. Yes, it is for a while. The yeah. military of America has been weakened now by LGBTQ, you know, agenda and all of these various other things. And very soon there'll be no more money for military. I just wonder how many Americans will be so patriotic and, and, and happy to do and go into military. Please, you know, let's let's be honest, friends. Uh, and then. Oh, Britain has got the mightiest army in Europe. You know, how in the world are we going to be conquered? You'll see how you'll be conquered, you silly doves. You'll be conquered by your own internal stupidity because right now you've got all of these other non-Israelites, uh, people who, who, are, who are ruling over you. Your government, right. half of your government is foreign nationals. Your prime minister is not an Israelite. 
He, by the way, he swore the first prime minister of, of Britain ever that swore not on the Bible. Do you know that? Did you know that, friends? No, he didn't swore on the Bible. He swore on Bhagavad Gita. Ho, ho. Interesting. So somebody is now changing. So it's not only that you have forgotten your, 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 your identity, but somebody is now, yeah. even your overall religion, however wrong it is, is now imposing Bhagavad Gita on you and so on. What are you telling me? That's how you're going to be destroyed by your internal, by your internal weaknesses. Foreigners are eating your power. Plus... In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 5 and 6, there is described siege, siege of your towns. Now, in our modern terms, siege will be international sanctions. So once yeah. the Germans and you, you British, in particular, you are a, a, a coastal country. And once they can just, all that they need to do is just cut trade with you, with continental Europe. They're already giving you trouble with the Northern Ireland. Those of you who are following that could see that. Northern Ireland, yes, do you know that? You see the Northern Ireland Protocol, Britain is not happy anymore because they're realizing, oh, well, wake up, Britain. Wake up and smell and smell the coming the coming troubles. So sooner or later, they're going to take away the Northern Ireland from you anyway. Oh, what about Falkland Islands? Yeah, sure enough. And let me just tell you something more for your British who may not know it, and for the rest of you. The, the insult you have given to my nation here, to Serbia nation, which was your ally in both world wars, a faithful friend, the insult you have done recently is that you've called this so-called state of Kosovo and you've called their, 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 their so-called military to come and become peacekeeping, part of the peacekeeping force in Falkland Islands. Terrible. Yes, there are only seven of them, by the way, so the rest of the world can laugh at the mighty army of Kosovo and every last. But I mean, that's an insult to the Serbian nation, to the nation that was your faithful ally, to the nation whose royal family is related to your family. Shame on you. And one of these days, the Germans are going to cut the trade with you. They're going to slam the sanctions against you. And then you'll see how your military, your mightiest military in Europe is going to, 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 to survive. Many of you are going to die from... From, from 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 being 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 dependent on medicine a wonderful bear when bear you know cuts cuts its medicine supply many of you are going to to, to, to fall into terrible crisis and die not to mention that in the book of uh, Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28 there is there is a horrible prophesied drought coming upon all of you anglo-saxon people and the, the the taste of that drought in America you can see it already where oh in the most liberal of all of your states, in your state of California, when the when the natural water is being dried up all the time and people are now just in, so concerned. Yes. And Gene knows what I'm talking about. And all of you Americans know what I'm talking about. Well, in the Bible, it says that at one point there'll be no rain, that the sky above you will be like a bronze, that the earth right. under your feet will be like, 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 like a dust. And just think what will happen when it happens. And plus the sanctions of Germany and sanctions of the European Union against all of you, that siege. That's how you silly dove Britain. That's how your military might is going to crumble very quickly. You know, oh, yeah. incredible yeah, how much you don't know the Bible. My nation, the Serbian nation, is totally literate biblically. But you people of all the nations should know the Bible better because you had great people in your, in your past. You had... You, you have all kinds of concordances. Bible helps this, that, and the other that no nation in the world does have. Strong's. Hey, do you ever think about Strong's Concordance? Something so common in your countries, right? Is it in America? Gene, it is. When you want to check something, yes. what do you uh -huh. go? Yeah. You go for Strong's Concordance. Do you think that there is a Norwegian Concordance? Do you think there is a German Concordance? Do you think there is Estonian, Latvian Concordance? Do you think there is Russian Concordance, Serbian Concordance, Croatian Concordance? No, none of those nations in the world have Concordance. Even those who are of Israelite origin, like Danish, like 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 Swedes, Norwegians, and so on. Strong. I mean, how much, how much time, how many years did it take for those people to compose concordance? Why? So that the rest of you silly doves would be able throughout your generations to study your Bible and to understand your Bible. But you, 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 you just spit on all of that. No, we don't want to be God's people. Bible is not relevant book. No, we, oh, we are the, oh, you say we are, we are, we are so wealthy because of, well, of course, because we deserve that. We deserve that. 
Aren't we Christian nations? Don't we spread Christianity to the world? Don't we deserve to be this wealthy? No, you don't. You deserve to be all, you all to be spanked, spanked on your bottoms and, and, and be yeah. told who you are and go through re-education program so that you would understand that you're Israelites, silly doves, right. rebellious house, the same. And why can't us. we see, why can't we see the blessings of Abraham? Yes. That have been on us for centuries. Centuries. Those blessings are now going away. Those blessings right. are dissolving away right. in our exactly. sight. Exactly. Blessings that no nation in the world has ever right. enjoyed. Many That's of you true. silly doves went to, to Qatar this, this, this year to watch the, the World Cup. Well, have you seen Qatar? Beautiful little nation, by the way. Very strict, Gene. I've been, I had to go to Qatar on my way to Sukkot. So I, I, I because ah. of uh -huh. Well, my reserved flight was given to somebody else, so they just <laughs> had to keep me oh, for an extra day, an extra night. Fine. All right. They gave me a room, you know, they gave me a nice hotel room uh -huh. with the airport, whatever. But I thought, let's just let's just kind of uh, investigate a little bit. Uh, not investigate, that's the wrong word. But, you know, you have so many synonyms. Uh -huh. in English. Let's just examine, that's the word. Let's just yeah. examine uh, a little bit about Qatar. Qatar is an amazing nation. A nation, by the way, made up not only of the Arabs, but also there are East Africans there, the black people, I guess those who are of Muslim Muslim uh, beliefs. And even right. many, you wouldn't believe, many Filipinos are there, which I could see in, at the airport, you know. Uh, many, I could see yellow, 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 yellow uh -huh. skinned people. And I was thinking, I guess I thought they perhaps came as, uh, you know, just as, as temporary workers. But no, those, they, there is a significant... A uh, uh, number of Filipinos that came to Qatar, probably also of, because uh, you know, even though the Philippines are the only so-called Christian nation in Southeast Asia, uh, they do have certain areas where they're you know dominated by the Muslims anyway. But right. interesting right. enough, the law is what we call Sharia law. But you know what? I was thinking that makes sense. You cannot make any sign by hand. It's 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 offense. Let's, let, let God forbid that you show uh, your, your middle finger to anybody. And even uh -huh. when you say that something is super, you must not show it because in the Arabic, sadly, in Arabic uh, interpretation, that's that's called for sex or whatever. Uh, sex, yeah. again, uh, Allah, sex outside of marriage is illegal. Um, not to mention various other things. And you think, I was thinking, well, wait a second, that makes sense. Qatar is a small nation. If you let people do whatever they want, you know, in their freedom of and their human rights, well, there is a big disintegration of that nation. You know, you just let let people do whatever they want. Let them just have, you know, drinks as much as they want. You know, fornicate, whatever. There you go. I was thinking, well, of course, isn't that why the the Yehovah, the the El Shaddai, the God of Israel, uh, isn't that why God of Israel, uh, in, well, uh, gave the law to Israelites, what not to do. Because otherwise, the whole nation just goes, goes, goes into a total devastation, perversion, and uh, disappears, you know, over the time. So Qatar is a very strict, strict nation. There was no, so the English fans could not, could not drink as much as they, as they usually do when they come to other, when they go to other countries, <laughs> and things like that, you know. And uh, anyway, but anyway, you have seen, you know, many of you from England, America, also, you have seen now Qatar. Qatar, the, the food is marvelous. The Arab food is, by the way, I mean, I might be biased, forgive me if I am, but the Arab food is brilliant because, first of all, you don't have to worry what is on your plate. <laughs> they they follow the yeah. they, they follow their laws, which they call, not kosher, but the other one, the uh, halal, halal laws. Uh, halal. Yeah, halal. halal laws is completely, basically, copied law from the Old Testament, which they copied in Quran, right. obviously. So you don't have to worry about that, but uh, with the uh, seasonings, you know, and things, they just know how to how to have appropriate se seasoning for, for lamb, for fish, for this and the other. So the Arab food is, um, uh, is healthy and tasty, beautiful. But anyway, even in Qatar, when you go to Qatar, you can see all of the English people and others who went there. It's not, there's no match when it comes to prosperity and, 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 and wealth. There is no match to England. <laughs> There is no match to America. There is no match to Canada. You you know you name it. Right. No match to Scandinavia because why? Well, because you are descendants of Abraham and the blessings of Abraham are upon you. But you, like you said, like Gene said, it's vanishing now. Why is it vanishing? 
Oh, because your sins, like, like, like that Vanish. Yeah. Do you have Vanish brand in, in your country? I don't know. But Vanish is here called to... Uh, Vanish is a brand of uh, chemical that you can use to uh, uh, eradicate the, 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 the staunchest, you know, f spots that might be on your clothing. All stains, yeah. Yeah, yeah all stains. Right. That's yeah. the way. Mm -hmm. So anyway, your sins, Americans and British and others, are... Are, are, is the vanish that is just making yeah. all those blessings vanishing. That's what right. it is. And that's why God, because you want to, you, 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 I'm realizing more and more, again, I told that last time, I think, but I'm repeating now myself, I'm realizing as time goes on, exactly why God is going to let it really happen. The chief reason is not only that you, that you're, you want to be, well, the chief reason that you want to be Bible ignorant, that you hate Bible, you hate God of the Bible. You don't want to, you don't want to actually accept your identity. You don't want to accept who you are. You would rather be pagans. Then God says, is that what you want, my children? Fine. You know, just like he said to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. You want to eat this tree of good and evil, you know, of the knowledge of good and evil? Fine, go, go your way, my children. Do it yourself and see where you'll get to. And see what we get to. We are just almost getting to <laughs> destroying everything around us. First, we're destroying the earth, yeah. and then we're going to be destroying one another. That's right. And what uh, we need to realize, what we need to realize as Israelites, is yes. we need to remember, we need to remember why our grand, our, our ancestors were kicked out of the land. They were they That's were right. they were evicted from the land because of their disobedience. Do yes. we think? Do we think that we can continue to disobey, but they'll let us in? Yes. No. Of course. You know, that's the thing. We got to yeah. figure out. You we figure have to out understand that we have to get our, our act together. Our Israel and said, well, sure, why not? Look, we are just decent, nice people. We're Look, it's not that you're not decent people. Many of you are much more decent than many others because others are pagans. <laughs> I was trying to explain to my friends in Australia the difference between Israelitish mindset and a pagan mindset. Pagan mindset, which is totally selfish, consumed with self, which is uh, has no regard for, 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 for whatever, just like it says for that nation coming to, it says God is going to send you fierce nation that has no regard for elderly or for children. It's right there in Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28. Exactly. Yeah. So I was trying to explain to my friends, the, 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 why don't you understand some things happening in the world? I said, friends, you don't understand because your Israelitish mind. Israelitish mind cannot fathom those things. And even your law to this day, to this day, there are certain laws, you know, protecting rights of this one, rights of, except for the deaf, except for the unborn children. But, you know, there's still laws protecting this, that, and the other. Uh, you still have some care for, you know, your gardens, your your grass, like English people are obsessed with grass. <laughs> grass, <laughs> you know, with grass, with feeding animals, you know, doing this, that, and the other. That's beautiful. It's not the issue with you. Israelites, silly doves. The problem is you want to be pagans in your lifestyle. <laughs> That's the problem. You want to keep your Christmas. You want to sing your Christmas carols that have nothing to do with Christ, by the way. Merry Christmas. Yeah. I, I can't remember. There's something with that. Merry Christmas has nothing to do with Christ. It's, it's the opposite. And by the way, it's Christ, Christ Mass. What Mass? When, was, when in the world do you read in the New Testament Christ ever attended a Mass? Never. <laughs> you know. Christmas, then you want Easter, the name of that horrible, terrible, terrible yes. uh, celebration which Constantine imposed tells you what it is. No, you want your Easter. You want your Halloween. Oh, really? You want to have all of those demons that you invoked on that? Yeah. There was only one in my nation that is, that's not traditional, traditional uh, custom, but it's becoming, it's becoming our fashion fad, you know. Only one mother in the capital of Serbia objecting and wrote back to the the teachers sent to kids send all to all the parents the, the letters saying let kids bring all these requisites for the halloween i don't know you know pumpkins what this one mother only one mother only one mother responded i'm not going i'm i'm exempting my child from this and i'm not going to i don't allow it to, yes. to participate my child in this because this is contrary to um, our religious beliefs i was like where are the other mothers as I was, oh, as I said, you know, I said, you know, and then later in one of the, my teachings in sermon, I said, where are the other mothers? You're supposed to love your children. And Halloween is obviously obvious, obvious satanic occult holiday. And where are you? I said, 
to exempt your children. So you want your children to participate in something so evil, so occult, so anti-Christian, and you expect blessings upon the children? No way. And then I said, later you'll see what have we done for us to have for this to happen to us, you know. That our children are perhaps, you know, disturbed, you know, uh, disobedient. Well, what have you done? Well, you have just you have just sent them to the to the to the arms of, of, of occult and paganism. You send them to the arms of Santa Claus, the evil deity of Greek mythology. Hello, hello, Christians, so-called Christians. House of Israel, do you hear me? You promote one, one of the most evil things of Greek mythology, and you expect to be blessed? No way. Oh, Santa exactly. Claus is coming to town. Yeah, he knows if you're good. And, oh, how disgusting can that be when you know the truth? Once you know the truth, Messiah, the Messiah, the Yeshua said, uh, that's in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But you, yeah. my friends, just like my nation of Serbia, you, my dear friends in Anglo-Saxon, well, you don't want to be free. No, we want our Christmas. We love our Christmas. We want our Easter. No, you don't want to be Israelites. You don't want to be free from paganism, Satanism, occultism, and curse. You just want to be under all of that. Is that what you want? Well, God is not going to force you otherwise. Not yet. And what what is astounding about that is that in, in the early days of America, Christmas was forbidden. Christmas forbidden. was outlawed. Right. Yeah. In, was it in the state of Massachusetts? Yes, it was. Or, yes. yes. It was it, it was in the northeast. I, in the northeast. I where, yeah. Where yeah. the first when the first settlers came, right? From That's right. Uh, right. That's right. It was, so it was they were the first settlers came from England. Hello, England and America. When the first settlers came in that very area of Christmas was forbidden. Why? Because it is not in the Bible, because it has nothing to do with Christ. Hey, good morning, America, Brinton. Anybody, anybody there? You know, sometimes I feel like Yeshua. I remember the description of the Laodicean church. You know, there is Yeshua at the very door, you know, knocking at the, at the very yeah. door. And Yeshua himself. So by their by their ways, by their mental uh, frame of mind, those yeah. so-called uh, believers have even pushed Yeshua outside the door. And yeah. he's knocking, saying, hello, anybody, anybody home? <laughs> anybody right. hear my voice? I wonder sometimes, my house of Israel, knowing all the prophets were they, you know, the prophets had to kind of keep repeating the same things all the time. I wonder sometimes, how many of you really hear this? How many of you really understand that God is not a, God is not a man to lie? And God, what he says in his word, he's going to do it. Many of you, I'm afraid, some years down the road, many of you, when you find yourself in captivity, many of you are going to be sorry. And, 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 and many of you will say to yourself, why didn't we listen when it was a time? Thankfully, it's, it, won't, it will not be late even then. And thankfully, those of us will not be able to give, give you program perhaps, but there'll be those two witnesses out of Jerusalem who are going to be witnessing to you, telling you exactly the same things. Exactly. Exactly the same things. And then many of you, thankfully, will recognize the message and say, look, what we heard was true, and look what we have done to ourselves. And to our children, by the way. Yes, that's right. Because I still hope that you love your children enough. I, I sometimes, I, I, I wonder, but the whole house of Israel, I still think that I still hope that you love your children, even though we know that due to that hunger coming from the drought, it's we know the prophecies is there that there'll be cannibalism in your countries. The people be eating their own children. That's sad. That's horrible. I I I, I know, but it's written in the Bible. And I, I'm facing yes. you with the ugly truth coming up. The ugly truth yes. is the ugly sins are going to bring you to that. Why don't you want to be free? Why don't you want to know the truth? Because all the truth we know about Christmas and Easter, friends, all that truth is written. You know in what language? In your English language. Do you think that my do you think that my Serbian native tongue has got anything that speaks about the origin of Christmas and Easter? Other than what other than things that I've translated from 
from foreign literature, that's about it. Thankfully, recently we've been finding some kind of not much popular books that do speak about some Serbian customs, totally anti-biblical anyway. But Easter, Christmas, all of these things, no. In the past, even on the national TV, the announcer would say, in the evening news, the most popular news, the answer used to say, Christmas is a Christmas is a holiday of pagan origin, but then, then he would then continue to speak about Christmas customs in, in this nation. Or Easter is, that used to be like at the end of the last century. That was it. Yes. But, you know, all the truth, what God has blessed you with, I mentioned Strong's Concordance as a case in point, <laughs> if you wish. What a, that, that was a funny phrase always, and this friend of mine, of Jewish origin, by the way, he would always, in his texts, he would <laughs> use that phrase, a case in point, I thought. <laughs> How interesting. Anyway, so, uh, I'm using Christmas because it's coming up, but, you know, and I use the, 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 uh, the Concordance, Strong's Concordance which is now online, so even us, the rest of the world, can use Strong's Concordance when we are looking for something in the Bible. But what a wonderful people who dedicated their life to, to, to give that truth to all of you. But all the truth about Christmas, about Easter uh, stuff, it's all written in your native tongue, in your English language, by the right. intellectual, intelligent people who just did it for you. In the book, like The Two Babylons, by Alexander Hislop. Yeah. He was a Scottish man, by the way. Uh, even the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, if you look at the back issues, from the 12th edition, it's worse. All of a sudden, somebody said, no, don't. this is not politically correct, so don't put any truth about Easter and Christmas, just delete it. But if you look at the back issues, Encyclopedia Britannica would tell you very clearly and succinctly about Christmas, Easter, birthdays, uh, Halloween, you name it. Anything yes. else? You have got it all. You've got so works in in your English language. Just look for it. Go to your libraries. They're just rich, especially American libraries. When you go into any American library, you've got you've got literature about any and every subject on the face of the earth. Go and look for literature that speaks about the origin of those things. You'll find it. It's right there. The rest of the world, including myself here and in East Europe and others, we got to know the truth about those holidays from English language. And then yeah. we translated it into our native tongues to inform our kinsmen about it. Of course, who are just, just like you, they don't really care, with few exceptions. And you bring curses upon yourself every single year with these customs and you wonder you don't see anything wrong with that. Anyway, uh, and, you know, I know we, we were going to speak about other topics, but somehow I guess this Christmas season yeah. <laughs> is so inspiring yeah. for us to once I, again remind. I, I completely understand, brother. Yeah. I, just, I, mean, so, I, I am so, it is, it is so saddening it to is. see how this country, this country, looks at the 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 things that have been lavished upon it, the wisdom yes. that has been lavished upon it, the the yes. the information that's been lavished upon it, and yet it still it treats it all as though it's of no importance. That's exactly true, and that's why you know that's what grieves me, and that's part of what we also read in the Bible. You see, why did your ancestors lose their identity, friends? Why did they lose their identity? Because it was prophesied, because God said, that's what God said to them. He, in, in effect, he said, you want to be pagans? Fine. You will become pagans. I'm going to scatter you all over the earth. Amos, was it Amos 9.9? 9? Yes. Amos 9. I'm going to scatter you. I'll know who I will. I, God, your God will know who you are, but he will not know who you are because you're going to be scattered into all the nations and you're going to be assimilated into paganism. And you'll be thinking that you're pagans, that you have nothing to do with the Bible, you know, and right. you will lose your identity. That's exactly what was prophesied. That's exactly what happened to your ancestors, friends, in right. Anglo-Saxon world, Northwest Europe, and you silly doves on British Isles. And even, even, even in describing you like silly doves, he is still, he is still, God is still merciful. 
because doves are kind of cute when they kind of coo, you know, when they when they're cooing and, and <laughs> well, and <laughs> and he says in Amos nine nine that he will not drop a single kernel. That's right. He will. You not. know, so so even now, even when we have demonstrated completely how idiotic we can be. He is still saying, "Come home, still saying, and I will home. accept you." Come home. He's still saying, "Just, just, just, just turn away from all of that." Look, yeah, okay, return, prodigal. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Exactly. He says, "Turn away from that." Yes, I, I've allowed this to your ancestors, but it doesn't have to be your fate. Why? Correct. Because in the meantime, over the centuries, I've, I've allowed, I've allowed various people like Strong's. And then the other concordance, I can't remember. There is another one that is very popular now, but now it's so like strong people, like strong people, like this, that, that the other people, like Hislop, to write to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. to write to you what are all those things you're practicing that you think are part of your identity, but it's not. It's part of somebody else's identity. It's part of the identity of other foreign gods. Yeah. Because how many times does God say foreign gods and he keeps saying in the old throughout the Old Testament I brought them but when he speaks about Israel and Israelites Israelites being so rebellious he says I brought them out of the land of Egypt I brought them out in other words friends your ancestors were just abject slaves with no human rights in Egypt and oh. God said well fine I'll remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their ancestors. Let me now bring them out of that land. Of that land, let me just release them. They're just abject slaves, but I'm going to make them people. In fact, I'm going to make them my nation. I'm going to right. give them my constitution. I'm going to give them my law. I'm going to bring them to my Sinai, and you know, and I'm going to bring them even. Interesting. Where was this? In it will be in uh, Exodus 31, I think. I'm going to even have a special covenant called Sabbath covenant with them. Even that, I'll have a Sabbath covenant in which it will be covenant throughout their generations. That's right. That's what he That's said. Right. And 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 you know about your ancestors, and then. He brings the ancestors out. He leads them through all of that horrible desert. And interestingly enough, then comes this phrase that you can read several times in the book of Ezekiel and, 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 and Jeremiah. Then he says, the children were worse than their fathers. I was thinking, what, does, what in the world does this mean? And then you come to the point, you read, Okay, they left Egypt. They go through the wilderness. You have no incident in the wilderness that they would sacrifice their children to Moloch, for example. But once, as soon as they entered the promised land, flowing with milk and honey, as soon as they entered the promised land, and God tells them, Don, examine how all these other nations have, were serving their gods because... Because of all of those things that they were doing here, I'm just kicking them out and I'm giving you this land. So do not do as they, they had done. Oh no, the children, those who survived, those who came, came into land with Joshua, the children were examining exactly what these other nations were doing. And they were just wondering, oh, we want to be, we want to do what the other nations do. You know, we want to do this. We want to serve Ishtar. We want to have Moloch. They began sacrificing their children. Remember the Valley of Hinnom. That was the valley, Gene, that you might remember, the cinema house in Jerusalem. <laughs> yes, Over yes. The Valley of Hinnom. And I was right. thinking because the our Jewish our dear Jewish counterparts there at that conference, the, the rabbis were, we who believe in Yeshua, we agreed we will not mention that name and anything because we understand that the Jewish people have been traumatized by false Jews, false Christians, uh, false Jews in a sense of right. uh, in a sense of belief. And we, we, right. we didn't want to mention that because we thought it would be very offensive and terrible for them. However, they did not even refrain from constantly insulting us calling jesus christ that name historical figure this one and the other and, and whatever and i was thinking well i cannot go home because yeshua said if you 
if you reject me before men, I'll reject you before the, my father. I was thinking if I go back home without at least addressing this, I was like, uh, well, then in a sense, I'll feel guilty. But at the same time, I was thinking, what if I say the truth? Well, here's the value of Hinom. <laughs> <laughs> All that they need yeah. to do is just grab me in and throw me out through the window. But I said to Eternal, not to Hashem, but to Eternal Yehovah, to El Shaddai, I said, if that's the price, let it be so, but I'm not going to deny Yeshua. I'm just going to mention him in positive term, in positive way, because, because we were very nice and kind and we didn't do anything wrong against, our, against those rabbis who just... Uh, and among other things... My dear house of Judah, those rabbis were telling us how Zohar and Kabbalah and Talmud are basically true religion as well. And we yeah. feel guilty for not, well, I'm so sorry, but I don't see in the, in, 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 in the canon, I see no Kabbalah at all. Uh, I yeah. see no, no Zohar and I see no Talmud anyway. So, uh, you know, right. Talmud. For those of us, for those of you who want to have endless, useless discussion of this, that, and the other, <laughs> you know, God has given God has given us very clear instructions, and we don't need really useless things about you know whatever about how to keep the Sabbath. Well, He says how to keep the Sabbath. <laughs> That's right. You know. That's right. And not only that, but He didn't He didn't send us the rabbis to add yeah. to and take away from the Torah. Say, take away and to be, you know, to be our, 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 our wisdom, wisdom guides who are going to tell us how to keep the Sabbath. He tells us how to keep the Sabbath, you know. He tells us about the yeah. rest. He speaks about the Holy Convocation. What right. else do you need, you know, and so exactly. on. In any case, uh, Valley of Hinnom, yes, when they sacrifice their children. Valley of Hinnom is mentioned in the book of, in the book of uh, Jeremiah. And today, Cinema House in, in Jerusalem over t uh, overlooks the Valley of Hinnom. Uh, I was thinking that I might end up in that valley as well, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> in any case, the point is this. Uh, the children became worse than their fathers, we, we read. And I was thinking, well, what would that mean? Well, it means exactly what it means. In the wilderness, there were no other nations, and they were not examining how the nations served God. When God said, now it's time to move, they moved. You know, at night, yeah. at night they had the uh, pillar of, uh, of, of, uh, of fire, fire. Yeah. warming mm -hmm. them. At day, they had like a cloud, cloud yeah, that was sealed. Cloud. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. What was the name? There is a Shekin Shekinah Glory, right? That was the one, the cloud, wasn't uh -huh. it? Mm -hmm. So the Shekinah yeah. Glory, that was like air conditioning, you know, uh, uh, protecting them from, from, from scorching heat. And yeah. that was it. No sacrifice of children, no, yeah. no customs like Easter, Christmas and others. And then they come into the, into the promised land. And all of a sudden children just, oh, Oh, these people sacrificed to their gods. Oh, these people kept this sun. They, they kept the birthday of their sun god. That's today's Christmas, by the way. Oh, here's the resurrection of the sun god. That's Easter, by the way. Oh, they've got this uh, lady of heaven, uh, the, 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 the madam of heaven, Astarotta or Easter, yes. you know, because yes. there was a mystic egg which fell into the red egg, by the way, fell into Euphrates. And out of that mystic egg, Ishtar, Ishtar was born. Oh, really? Give me a break. So anyway, that's what the children were doing. So they, they were worse than their fathers, you see. And of yeah. course, they polluted the land. And the land, instead of having milk and honey, today that land is, as we know, mostly a desert. Yeah. Uh, but nevertheless, I still have to say our brother Judah, uh, we can admire him for still making that land tillable and uh, basically... Yeah. You know, every piece that they could, where they could plant something and, and do, uh, they've done it. Mm -hmm. made, Jerusalem is always filled with, with, with flowers yeah. all over the place. So it's a beautiful thing to know. Right. And it's a beautiful they, thing to see. Yeah, mm -hmm. they need to understand. They need to understand that when the two houses are put back together again, the result will not just be Judah. The result will be a combination of all 12 tribes. Oh, certainly, and, and and see they and you know they don't they don't want that they want they want to keep us all looking like Judah and that's just not right. going to happen. No, that's no. not the way Yehovah wants it. That's not not only that, but uh, that'll yeah. be the case for the whole world because that's right. And when we get reunited finally, we know that the uh, kingdom of God, as we call it usually, it's also called the kingdom of Israel. Uh -huh. That's right. 
So that means right. the king of Israel yeah. now is going to be the role model for the rest of the nations. So right. I would say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord of Jacob, and we shall learn his ways. And he will lead us, finally. You see, finally the right. pagan world is going to start, stop being pagan. And people will just yeah. want to be grafted into the house of Israel. Yes, indeed. Right. That's, that's exactly why, that's right. how we know, that's how we know God plans to save the rest, all the world. You right. know, but through the good example of both houses united now, it will be the house of Israel. To those of you who, who despise God of Israel, well, bad for you, because the kingdom of God will be the... Uh, will be also the kingdom of Israel. And all of the right. nations uh, will fall under the authority and power of right. the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Israel because Christ is going to be, Yeshua is going to be the king of all the earth. And uh, the kingdom, it says, the, the, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God as the water covers the sea. So there we go. So those yeah. of you who don't want, who would love to then rebel, well, you're, you're, you, you'll, be, you'll be eliminated very quickly because in yeah. the book of Isaiah, there is this, they'll go out and see the, the, uh, the bodies of those who rebelled. So there'll be no more right. rebellion. And you, That's Israelites, right. those of you who survived the Great Tribulation and stuff and that corrective punishment, you'll be also cleansed. There is a prophecy, I think in Ezekiel as well, that before you enter into the land, you're going to be you're going to be examined, and all the rebels are going to be eliminated. Enough of your rebellion. Right. Look what your rebellion right. has. Done. Well, look what your rebellion has done not only to your countries. Look what it has done to the world. You may wonder why the rest of the world hates America. Well, one of the reasons, my American friends, is because your your because your tax money goes to your ambassadors who are promoting everywhere. As, no, as a mandatory thing, they're promoting LGBTQ agenda. Yes. On that, on that you think when somebody tries to promote it in Qatar, in the Arab world, <laughs> in the rest of the world where it's detested, the whole world detests that, but your American ambassadors are yeah. basically have mandate, they're obliged, obligated to promote that. Then you uh, wonder why people hate America. Well, they, that's why they hate America. Not yeah, to mention your, your, your abortions, not to mention your... Yes. Silly, silly administration yeah. right now, headed by this demented murderer, yeah. who is a Catholic, yeah. by the way. Yes. And of course, and even he, the Catholics don't, even the Catholics won't let him in. No, even the Catholics won't <laughs> let him in. Exactly. I remember when there was one, one Catholic priest, he wouldn't give him the Eucharist because of his right. abortion and stuff. And I was, I was just right. thrilled. I said to all of my friends, we're not Catholic, but I said, no matter what we, no matter, uh, I said to one of my friends, please write a note that we, Yeshua's followers, admire this man for his consistency, <laughs> that priest, right. yes. So, exactly. uh, you know, so that, 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 that's what it is. And sadly, I, I, do, I do fancy Trump, of course, be in power rather yes. than, rather than this too. one. But I understand that yes. even Trump will not be able to rectify what these criminals have done to America. Yes. With all yes. of these thousands exactly. of illegal immigrants getting in and yes. all kinds of things. So sadly, even Trump... I'm afraid yeah. we'll not be able to make it. Well, he'll certainly not make America great again, but we can always give him a comfort, Mr. President. <laughs> God is going right. to make, God of Israel is going to make America great again very yeah. soon. And That's right. Very soon after America repents in the Great Tribulation for all of his terrible sins, the same goes for the Anglo Saxon world, for you Scandinavians, for you people of Benelux, and for the rest of Israelites who are scattered all over the place. And yes. uh, who, according to Ezekiel 9, cry and sigh for the abominations being done in this in, the, in their lands anyway. Right. So right. they'll be they'll be released soon. This wonderful kingdom of Israel is coming. All oh, those of you who don't want to be under the kingdom of Israel, well, you can you have no choice. You can only I don't know. You can just yeah. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know of any other choice. Yeah, go jump the lake, as the Americans would say. Yeah, that's you know, right. Just go jump the lake <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's anything right. else, because the kingdom of Israel is coming. In that that's kingdom, right. Israelites will be repented people, different people, having, right. God says, I'll put another spirit in them, meaning his spirit, and right. uh, their hearts will be circumcised. They'll be finally right. people, as David was after his own heart. And then yeah. it's open, up, open the door for the rest of the world. Those of you who don't want it, too bad you can just you can yeah, just to, jump, jump the lake an alternative. if that's what you yeah. want but uh, 
I would certainly not recommend it because uh, eternal glory, happiness, uh, joy, yeah. peace, love, and uh, the whole universe is, by the way, very, very, very dead. God probably having right. so many of us would love us to make the whole universe uh, filled with life and joy and so on. And right. so uh, I was going, we we're going to speak about the beast power. You see, the beast power, we'll just probably do it some other time. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Beast yeah, being power is going to be, and it is already in making, it's a Satan, Satan's instrument that has its right. own religious uh, religious agent called, we all mentioned, already mentioned him, Vatican, of course. It will have its right. own uh, civil, so to speak, civil political kind of uh, agent. It will be the coming European dictator who is going to come right. into power after this conflict in the Middle East, that there is a prophesied conflict between Iran, the state of Israel, and Syria. And this one is going to come in and broker the peace, uh, according to Daniel 11, broker peace that will, should last for seven years, but in the half, halfway through that, yeah. he's going to actually occupy the state of Israel, then unleash uh, his attack on the Anglo-Saxon world, primarily, then conquer the Arabs, and then he'll just think that he was going to rule without anybody being able to oppose him, but the Chinese and Russians won't be very happy with him, as they're not happy with <laughs> with many things when it comes to Europe yeah. today. And then yeah. uh, some rumors, rumors will be there from Chinese and Russians, and he will think that he's invincible. He'll go for China and Russia. That'll be he, the end of this European dictator. But in the meantime, he's embodiment of everything that we have been just talking about, of this so-called Christianity, of the so-called Christian yeah. customs, of uh, yeah. hatred for the Jews and hatred for Anglo-Saxon world. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he's coming. I was going to tell you about that one, but uh, instead, because of this winter uh, and, 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 yeah. and celebration of paganism in winter, I guess I was... Yeah. I was de deterred to talk to you again and warn you once again because I keep every time I have an interview with Gene, my whole my whole first intention is to warn you, the house of Israel and the house of Judah, of the need for you to turn to your God, get right. get free from the chains of paganism, please. That's right. Please for your own good, because you're bringing curses upon your lands, curse upon your families, curse upon your communities, curse upon your own children with yeah. doing things that seem to be nice and lovely Christian customs that have nothing to do with Christ. They're all the legacy of Egypt, Rome, Greece, uh, yeah. other pagan traditions, you know, be that Scandinavian, uh, 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 you know, yeah. whatever yeah. tradition and you think it's all pleasing to God and it's so lovely that your children will have a beautiful beautiful uh, childhood and then one of these days they'll remember how they kept Christmas on the Christmas tree Christmas tree <laughs> is described in, uh, in Jeremiah 10 the Christmas tree is phallus of Nimrod it's a worship right. of phallus of Nimrod friends do you realize what you're doing every single 24, yeah. Every single December, you're 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 bringing in now follows of Nimrod. You're letting your children yeah. uh, associate pleasant feelings with all of that. That's uh, it's yeah. horrible what you're doing to your children and to yourselves. Yeah. And that's, I completely agree. Yeah. Yes, but the uh, European beast, the European dictator of German origin, is coming up. We'll come back to that topic probably next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, he is going to be promoting all of these evil things. Yeah. And it's going to be European law. And a warning to the rest of you Israelis who don't want to keep that. You'll be yes. hated by all the nations. You'll be enemies number one of your countries. You'll be targeted by your governments. Even your own, yeah. like Jeremiah, what happened to Jeremiah, even his own kinsmen, even his own relatives hated him. That's right. And that's going to happen right. to us because Yeshua says, all nations are going to hate us for his name's sake. Name say his name is not Hashem anyway, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. That's the topic. Hey Sasha. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for for enlightening us once again and giving us two solid well, hours of understanding. 
Right. My last plea with you, House of Israel, please, 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 please wake up to who you are. Yes, you yes. Right. You're God's people, I, not pagans. Yes, that's right. And my, my version of that same statement is, remember, remember who, who you, you are. are. Mm -hmm.